So again, we are talking, when we're talking phonological awareness, and that's the big umbrella term that involves many things under it. We're talking about sounds and being able to understand that language is made up of units of sounds, syllables, words, sentences. Um, and you're, you can become, we talked about it last week, we were talking about emergent readers. You become more and more discriminant in the sounds that you can recognize. So you might be able to recognize a word. Then you might be able to recognize that cowboy is both cow and boy and a quarterback that throws an interception when you're about to win the coolest game ever. Um, but then you recognize that you might hear the start of cowboy being cup. And so you're getting more and more discreet as your skills develop. But phonemic awareness, under that umbrella, now we're recognizing that we're made up of individual phonemes. And what is a phoneme again? Who can remind me? Smallest. Yes, a phoneme is the smallest unit of sound. But most importantly, you can hear them, identify them, and manipulate as in blend, cut, set, or, as in being able to blend, or segment, or substitute. You can mess with your phonemes. Don't mess with my phoneme. Um, <laughs> you can start to manipulate phonemes. And that's really, it is a huge step in your emergent readers when they can start doing phoneme manipulation. <laughs> that bad, huh? <coughs> so I teach. What should you teach if you're doing phonemic awareness? Well, things like how do you identify and count words in a sentence? Well, how do you identify and count syllables? Um, rhyming words, pig, big, you know, basically just how do you teach us? Just a Dr. Seuss book. Man's a genius. Um, but then the harder stuff, when we think about this on a scale, identifying, blending, segmenting, deleting, and substituting phonemes. What's up? Identifying. Identifying? Yeah. What'd you say? It's how you identify on the fly. It's oh, called okay. fast categorization. Oh, okay. You've never heard of identifying? No. Well, when you identify things on the fly, you're identifying. <laughs> so this is basically what you're teaching when you're focusing on phonemic awareness. However, I see this all the time. Oh, I'm going to give them a phonemic awareness worksheet, and they're going to read the instructions to fill it out. If your students are at this level, they're not reading. Substituting phonemes, identifying, blending, segmenting, deleting, and substituting phonemes. So what is blending? Literally, that means I make the sounds. Yes, the stretching. I don't know if that's what you're doing, but that is kind of what it is. <laughs> Just talking with my hands, actually. Um, but you, don't, you wouldn't say... I wouldn't tell the students, put a one in the box, and I got this from a great lesson plan um, from a Florida website where you'll probably all steal your ideas for what you want to teach. You wouldn't say, put the P-L, put a one in the box with a picture that has the sounds P-L-A and T in it. What do I need to say? Yes. You say, and it, you, that's why you, that's why hopefully you have this already on tape, because doing it, you know, orally is mind-numbingly boring. Um, 
but you can make them the kind of fun games. Phonemes are right to make games out of them. I'm going to show you a couple examples today how to do phonemic awareness with some games. And then you guys are hopefully going to come up with some really fun creative activities to work on um, while I conference with you folks about your class phonemes. Um, so, yes, you'd say find, put a number in a box with a picture that has the sound and you want them to find planes. You can, you know, we say it, smash it that we talked about. <coughs> pa, la, and mm, smash plant. Kids like smashing things. Um, you get slinkies to do it. So you're like, pa, la, pa, la and, and then splint. You smash it back together with the slinky. So that's kind of, you're blending. That's what it means. You're blending the sounds. You're taking the P, the sound of the P, the sound of the L, the sound of the A, the sound of the N, the sound of the T. So notice, phonemes are not syllables. A two-syllable word does not have two phonemes. Plant is how many syllables? One. How many phonemes? Five. Five. Yes. The next one is segmenting. If your students are able to blend, you then move on to segmenting phonemes. When you're segmenting, you're basically breaking and identifying how many phonemes are in a word. They're counting, they're breaking the word up into phonemes. So, for example, I could give them this card with a 2, 3, 4, and 5 on it. And ask them, and then they flip over a card, and it's a picture of a book. They have to point to the number of phonemes. So in book, there is book, book, three phonemes, three sounds. So the kids point the three, whoever got the three first, maybe get a point, and they move on to the next round. Next person goes. So they could get tractor, and that's six. It's hard. You think segmenting phonemes is easy, but take a word like tractor and try to get the six. With the R or not? No. Mm -hmm. What do you think? It's a T and R, one sound or two sounds? Two. Somebody find me the answer. Two. It's still, T and R is three sounds, one sound, I'm hearing a lot of answers. Oh, just T and R. T and R, do we count that as one phoneme or two? Two. 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 Somebody, please look it up. Somebody tell me. I want to I I answer from a reliable source. Uh, Somebody check the interweb thing. It's an R control. Right? What? It's an R control. Yeah, you do have this class right afterwards, don't you? Um, we're talking about the different kinds of uh, controls. <laughs> what? Why, are you in this same class? Yeah. I'm tomorrow. I'm a fucking idiot. You guys have a test on this tomorrow? Yeah. What is this? 435. Which is this class. Which is this class for special education, and it's much worse. <laughs> well, that's the diagnostic reading assessment class? Yes. Well, you guys get more and more out of it. Like, you guys get really, you dive really deep into the assessments. It's a long list. On white. <laughs> Nobody's looked up the answer yet? It's tractor? Yes. Wasn't it a bitch? Yeah. Because you still hear that. But, yeah. The blend is a little different now you're talking. Yeah. <laughs> I will. Yeah. Or. Or. So OR is one. Yeah. But everything else is one. Yeah. Tricky stuff, guys. It's so. What? It's, it's six. It's one. The OR is its own sound. OR is a sound. Oh, the CK is <laughs> There's no CK in tractor. No, I mean, I mean, okay, never mind. I know, yes, that's the cuss sound. I know what you're saying. Uh, turning it into a board game. I would never give the credit the word crayon or tractor. I mean, that's like you could maybe throw them in as bonus words. Um, but you're really using short words, usually, like dog. But here you turn it into a board game for segmenting. 
and they flip over a card, and they get to move the number of spaces as there are phonemes in the word. And how many phonemes are there in the English language? Yep. So why didn't somebody just Google list of phonemes in English? That might have been then you've been able to check it. You guys have these computers in your pockets that connect to the interweb. The next stage, the lesion. Now we're talking about manipulation. I just break manipulation into deletion and substitution in addition. But you'll see it a lot of texts they just talk about <coughs> phony manipulation, switching words around. So you give them four cards. <coughs> you ask them. We have eat down there. Or no, we, we started with feet. We started with feet. If I were to take away the F, which of these pictures do I have? Fuck, oh, sorry, you're right. Never say the letter sound. Good correction, I might. You don't tell them. That you never say the letter, you say the sound. Very good point. <laughs> so those cl so those classes are like almost exactly the same. Like we cover the Yeah. Literally the same exact thing. Hopefully you won't pass the pass the foundation stuff. I actually took that class last spring semester and I was wondering because you did pretty well on the test. So I was like, you had some background knowledge, so that explains a lot. Then. You two. <laughs> no, you guys both did very well. Um, yeah. So, the, you take away the. If I took away the fuck sound, what would I have left? Eat. There's, there's the lead. Yes, I wouldn't play this word with truck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the next one is substitution, having words kind of change when you switch out phonemes in the middle or in the end. So top becoming mop. You're not deleting, you're substituting. You all see this where you give them pictures and you're switching a sound and it switches. Um, I love songs for teaching phoneme substitution. Eat, eat apples and bananas. Oh, everyone's classic. I Not like as good without Robbie eat, singing it though. Eat, eat apples and bananas. That's it? You only do the A? I don't get the oot. Oot, oot, any ooples and banunus? I feel like if I go to a key, I'd be like, I'd like to oot a banunu, please. Um, yeah, so there they're substituting the vowels. I'd like to um, eat, 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 in by nine knives. They're switching out vowel sounds, they're substituting. <laughs> um, My man, Dr. Seuss, was a master at switch at doing phoneme um, substitution and not having his books suck. Like a lot of like the phonics or the phoneme like books, like they're just awful to read. Everything, like all of these like things that we're talking about between now and through phonics and fluency, the man was an absolute genius. Um, because they're all built that way. Like some of the books only have like 50 sight words, or they only have a lot of substitutions. Or he, is, he does a lot of the, the, um, the non, his books are full of nonsense words, but every kid knows that it's a noun or verb, or they're nonsense words that are specifically designed to reinforce specific spelling patterns or phonics patterns. Um, so, for example, where's my, oh no, I want to do the look inside. Does it only let me do it once? No, you can do it next. No, there was a there was oh there that's what I was looking for this button. I am Sam. I am Sam. Sam, I am. 
That Sam I am. That Sam I am. There's I a subtraction. Like Sam I am. Sam I am. Do you like green eggs and ham? There's your substitution. I do not like them, Sam. Sam and ham. So it's a great way to kind of focus in on substitution. So those are just kind of a description of what's involved in community awareness. The difference between here and, you know, concepts about print and, and, you know, letter association is now you're associating with, like, with sounds. You don't want them just to be able to identify sound, the letters, but you want them to be able to identify sounds. That's the difference. So, you want to provide them that systematic and explicit instruction. Go through that scale that I just talked about. You don't just start at substitution. You work up to it. And you use explicit instruction. And we'll do a lot of, um, and we'll talk next week about how you assess phonemic awareness. For those of you that are in 435, it looks like you guys are taking a test on that already Wednesday. Or tomorrow. Or something. And then all those fun activities that we just talked about, the blending the sounds, the sort, words, so, sorting the sounds, building words by combining sounds and manipulating the sounds and letters. Once you start manipulating the letters, though, you know, you're starting to, that's like that bridge into phonics, which is where we'll head next. Because now you're correlating specific letter patterns with sounds. But don't forget to read page 160. So, but your phonemic, this isn't just like, there's no like, you just don't do it for 20 minutes. You build it into your morning message. And I almost thought about just doing today's having you guys plan and, and do your own morning messages today. You build it into time before recess. You just like, as an early elementary teacher or an early childhood teacher, you take every opportunity to build in phonemic awareness when you can. It might be like on the way to lunch. But, you know, it might be or you could have kids count out words. There's, there's lots of opportunities. And it's a game to them, so it's fun. Your kids should absolutely love this. It is ripe for games. So if you wanted to work on replication, that's basically you repeat the, the correct configuration. You know, put your top teeth on your bottom lip. And say, they're just basically repeating after you. Isolation simple. What's the first sound you hear in bat? And they should be able to say, ba, ba. You're not saying what's the first letter in bat. You see the difference? The first sound. For now, um, identification. What is the same sound in money, map, and mind? Besides the fact that there are three things I don't have. Um, but the mm sound. Categorization. Cat, blah, blah, blah. Categorization. One of these words doing the wrong thing kind of thing. Hug, hut, and run. What doesn't belong? Run does not start with hug. There's the deletion. What is the sheep without the, the what is sheep without the pup? Sheep. And you notice like when you see words like this on any kind of assessment or worksheet, it's telling you to read them out, saying not the sound, saying sound about not reading them. It is so hard just to convince yourself not to say what is the sheep without the p, but to do what is the sheep without the pup. 
or there's the addition. What word do you hear if you add S to love? A lot of people just say loads. Um, but you're saying, so you might want to, you know, if it, and what did I just do? I just did it myself. What do you get when you add S to, you, what do you get when you add S to love, slow? Rhyming, I'm not going to really define that. If you don't know what that is, leave my class now and don't come back. Um, <laughs> segmenting and counting. Being a, you know, we kind of went over that, but how many sounds are in mouse? Count them with your fingers as you say them. Mouse. And that's, some people use the, the little say it, uh, move it, like you know, give the kids tokens. And they put five of them in a row and they move them up as they get to them. And substitutions. The word is cop. Change it, puh, to t. What is the new word? Cut. See? So that's real, that's what you want to teach when you talk in phonemic awareness. These are the skills you want to teach. Very important in early childhood, in kindergarten, and even in the first grade. You've been doing a lot of this in first grade, especially that um, difficult segmentation. So even if the kids have reached a new level and they can do some basic reading, doesn't mean you stop teaching phonemic awareness as soon as they're reading. You just reach those higher levels of substitutions. Or you give them those words like crayon and tractor. Ah, uh, this one's not that. You don't need this one. This one's cute. Hi, Rika fans. This is for Marilyn and I, the author of the study guide for Revised Rika. We're doing an exercise where we on phonic segmentation and phonemic awareness. It's actually phonemic awareness and phonic segmentation. Take it from your reader. In answering the questions on the Rika, it is important to have a clear understanding of the difference between phonemic awareness and phonics. An important concept to remember is that phonemic awareness involves listening only, and phonics involves listening and looking. Phonemic awareness exercises can be done with one's eyes closed. To illustrate this, Michael, Grace, and Brooke are going to help me to demonstrate the difference. Here we go. I've given each child a sound to repeat. Now close your eyes and listen to the sounds that they say. The children segmented the sounds, phoneme segmentation, and blended the sounds, phoneme blended. There was nothing to see. You were just listening. Now I'm going to change the first sound. Close your eyes and listen while the children say the sound. This is an example of phoneme substitution. Now I'm going to change the ending sound. These kids don't want to be there. <laughs> like, and you're making us wear matching shirts. <laughs> now I'm going to change the middle sound. Vowels are more difficult. Beginning sounds and ending sounds easier to do. Next, I'm going to give the children the letters that go with the sound. This time, keep your eyes open because you are looking at the letter as well as listening to the sound. Next, I'm going to substitute the first letter of the word. The point is, once you're listening and looking, you're down the phone. Now I'm going to substitute the last letter of the word. And finally, we are going to substitute 
just hit the middle letter of the word. Let's try that. Yeah. <laughs> These vowels are difficult. Oh, For the first time, when your eyes were closed, you were using phoneme awareness skills. Once a letter was added, it became phonics. Remember that phonemic awareness only involves listening. Phonics involves listening and looking at the letter. And that's the easiest way to really define it. Bye there, bud. Your kids hate you. And then, of course, we can't leave without some songs. Oh, what, 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 what just happened? Let's <laughs> go. 